The last astrophysics uh, topic for higher level students is uh, all about Hubble's law. That's the main thing going on here. Uh, this is named after a guy named Edwin Hubble and uh, he was uh, in the early 1900s he was figuring out and looking at a lot of um, different spectra of galaxies and realized a really neat uh, thing that the recession speed remember galaxies every time we look at a galaxy they're um, they're going away from us uh, because they're all red shifted so he noticed that the recession speed, in other words, the speed that the galaxies go away, is actually related to their distance. So recession speed of galaxies, whoops, is related to their distance from us. In other words, the further away something is, the faster it's going. So we can then use what's now called Hubble's law. So we can actually do a graph of the distance away. In other words, the distance from us to that galaxy versus uh, the recession speed. So if we do this, we actually get a pretty much a straight line. It's not exactly straight, but it's pretty much straight. As a result, then, we can write this equation here. Now, this is in your uh, data booklet, and it goes, um, I just want to make sure I have the right form. Yeah, so they say it's um, V equals H zero D. So they just write it like this. This is the key thing here. I mean, there's other key equations within this uh, section. So there's actually, uh, there's another equation here about, um, about the change in wavelength. This is actually just about, um, here we go, it's like this. There's another equation. This actually relates, this is for a red shifted um, spectra. In other words, this would be the wavelength of a line that we expect to have. This is how much it's been shifted. And that tells us uh, a ratio of the speed of the galaxy to uh, the speed of light. In other words, we can then say then that the galaxy is going uh, some multiple of C. Because if you can move C over there, then you can say, oh, this thing is going, you know, um, 0.5, the speed of light. So that's another equation that's useful, but I, this one right here is the one I wanted to talk about. This one uh, I think is, is more important to mention here. So V is the recession speed of the galaxy, D is its distance away, and H0 is known as the Hubble constant. Now, this stuff often has weird units. So it's going to be in things like, uh, they're going to mention megaparsecs, and uh, so they're going to mention all sorts of weird units here. But really, Hubble's constant, although it has weird units, it's otherwise it's pretty okay. I mean, it's pretty straightforward to use. It's just a matter of sometimes converting units if you need to use it. But basically, remember when we talked about linearization during the core videos? Um, here is an example of linearization going on. I've got a graph of V, versus D. See? I've got recession speed V versus distance D. This could be in parsecs or megaparsecs or meters or light years. It doesn't matter. This could be in meters per second or kilometers per second or parsecs per fortnight. It doesn't matter what units you want to use. The key thing is though, we've got velocity versus distance. So this is the Y. This is equals to something X. So that means, uh, well, because there's no plus or minus anything over here, that's why we expect it to pass through the origin, because it's got a y-intercept of zero. Uh, that should make sense. At zero distance, it should have zero speed. I mean, at least that's, um, that's somewhat logical. Now, what we can do then is uh, look at this graph, and we can say, well, what does the slope tell you then? And if you understand linearization, you'll see that the slope is equal to h is zero. Because remember, y equals mx. m is the slope. So h zero is the slope. 
So a V versus D graph, the slope is your Hubble constant. That's the first important thing I think you need to know about. The other cool thing I think is that um, assuming this is linear, we can do something else pretty neat. We can do this. We can say, well, since, um, since speed is also equal to distance over time, and we also said that V was equal to H0 times D, right? We just said that. This is how distance, uh, how a speed works if it's not accelerating. Uh, then we would have this. And if that's the case, then we could say then, well then since that V equals that V, we could then say that D over T equals H zero D. Right? That's just setting this equal to that. Now what we have happening then is this D cancels out that D. Those go away. And that means I have one over T equals H zero, or I can flip them around and say then that T equals one over H zero. This is really cool because this is the age of the universe. That's what this age is here. That's what this T is. So if you know what the Hubble constant is, then doing one over the Hubble constant, as long as you're really careful with your units, then you get the age of the universe. It all depends on what you want to convert to because you can get the age of the universe in years or in minutes or in seconds. It's just a matter of converting. In practical situations on exam questions, that's the only annoying part about these is that um, you have to just be careful with converting units. Other than that, it's really straightforward. You have V equals H zero D and the age of the universe is one over H zero. And it turns out if you use the current value of the Hubble constant, at least the best version of it, you end up with an age of the universe that's pretty much 13.7 billion years. And that's how we know the age of the universe. It's because it seems to be this is showing us that the age of the universe is about 13.7 billion years old. Of course, we're assuming this is linear and uh, it may not always be linear. So that's something. But this uh, using our assumptions, it's approximately this. So if on an exam question they ask you how old is the universe, all you have to do is go one over H zero and be careful for your units for just converting them. That's all. So that, uh, that's everything we needed to talk about as far as um, astrophysics. So now we've covered the standard level uh, parts of astrophysics as well as these last two which were for the higher levels. So uh, that's it for this topic.